Hello again. Today we're going to talk about the ungrounded receptacle. Can you replace it with a grounded type? Well, that's a big fat yes and no. The thing of it is, is that you have no ground inside your inside of your house. These were usually put in around the 1950s, pre-1950s. So that's what you get with these because the houses didn't have grounds in them yet. And so now we have these, a grounded outlet. Ground is an alternate alternate path for current to flow so it doesn't flow through you, okay? That's what it's meant for. So replacing, taking these out and putting these in, it's still ungrounded. You have the same type. If you don't have ground in your house, you're supposed to replace all of your receptacles with these and it's the only way you can pass inspection. But there's another way that you can replace this for this and uh, it's called the GFI. So long as this is a GFI protected circuit, you can put these in. The GFI has a line and a load side. The line is the power coming in, the load is the power going out. So that in essence protects the circuit. So it isn't like you have a ground now, but it takes the place of that ground. So now the problem lies is how do we know where to put our GFI receptacle because it has to protect that whole circuit in order to put these grounded receptacles in. And when you do, these GFI receptacles come with uh, little stickers that say GFCI protected circuit. You have to put them on each outlet. So the inspector knows or what have you, you're living in there, who cares? The problem is you could have multiple circuits going in different boxes. You don't know where that circuit starts. If it were easy like this, I've got my circuit coming in. I know it because it's an extension cord. I rigged it so I can have this board here. The other is it would be going out. So that's easy enough. But when you dig in your plugs, how do you know where it starts? So you would have to take out all of your plugs and go around with the tick tracer and test each one until it buzzes and it's hot. So once it does that, that's the starting of your circuit. We know that that's the line. Everything else in that box would be the load. That's how you find the line and the load in your circuit. So let me show you how that would look like. Okay, now we have all of our receptacles out, right? Taking out our non-grounded outlets. So we're gonna try to look for where the power is so we can establish line and load. So our tick tracer, where I made the nice little sound, I can imitate it, but there you go. But we check it out in each box. Everything's pulled out. See, these things, they can give you a misreading, but you put them around the wires, nothing there. Around the wires, nothing there. When you touch it, it's static electricity, which makes this thing go off. But when you find it, you'll know, and then you go, okay, it's a lot more of a rapid pulse. And you know that we had power in that box, and then to find exactly which ones uh, are the line side, the power, we go to a multimeter, and then we know for sure that we have that's our power. Um, so now we know where our line is and then our load goes out. Now, even if you have grounds inside that box, maybe somebody wired it kind of goofy, those grounds are doing nothing. Now, like if you have steel boxes and you feel that you want to ground to the steel boxes, they're not grounded. They're just right there to wood or what have you. There's nothing grounded in there. So if you think that you could just run a screw in or put a tab on the side of the box and ground it, it does no good. So it has to be protected by the GFI outlet. Uh, then you could put in your three prong outlets and then uh, you can enjoy uh, putting in cords without having to tear the grounds out of them. But yeah, that's it in a nutshell for that um, easy stuff. That's it. So thanks, like, share, please, and appreciate you.